31 years ago in 1990, a total of 2,784 babies were born on New Year's Day in China's most popular city, Shanghai. This past New Year's Day, only 27 new babies were born in Shanghai. According to data released by the Beijing Municipal Government in April, total births in Beijing in 2020 fell 24% from 2019, reaching a 10-year low. A professor at Beijing University said that the number of births in the populous southern city of Guangzhou also hit its 10-year low in 2020. He said, the population collapse in mainland China has arrived. But the official Chinese census just released shows an uptick in total population. What is the truth about China's population? Hi everyone, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lei. China's decades of one-child policy have caused the country to lose young people, and particularly childbearing age women. This has resulted not only in a declining aging population, but also the loss of the Chinese labor force, both of which are threatening China's future growth. Last December, China completed its seventh national census, but the central government delayed the release of the data for a month. The delay triggered wide speculation. An online media, China Digital Times, said that because the population is on a downward trend and the total fertility rate has fallen below the warning line, relevant government departments needed time to do so-called statistical maintenance work. The UK's Financial Times quoted a person familiar with the matter as saying, China will see its first population decline, with a total population of less than 1.4 billion. The 1.4 billion is a very sensitive number to Beijing. It's the official Chinese population in 2019, the year before the census. Whether or not the census data goes over or under 1.4 billion indicates if China's population is on an upward or downward trend, and this is no small matter to Beijing. On May 11th, Chinese authorities finally released the census data claiming that the total population is 1.41 billion, a slight increase over 2019's 1.4 billion. Dr. Yi Fuxian, a demographer and an expert on China's population at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, disagrees with the number. Based on his latest study, Dr. Yi said that the population of China in 2020 was only about 1.26 billion. Previously, in a South China Morning Post article, he said that the 2019 population was 1.28 billion. So the total Chinese population went down 2% from 1.28 to 1.26 billion, rather than slightly increase from 1.4 to 1.41 billion. But why are the Chinese authorities so attached to the number 1.4 billion? Among other reasons, the most important reason why the Chinese regime wants to keep the total population over 1.4 billion is India. India's population is 1.38 billion. If China published its population at 1.26, China will lose its status as the world's most populous country to India. Not only that, India's fertility rate and birth rate are both significantly higher than those of China. This will make India emerge as a powerful country overtaking China. And the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want to see this happen, particularly when the China-India relations are somewhat strained at the moment. Other than this main reason, CCP's own system and operation don't allow it to publish accurate numbers. For example, because the CCP's 2019 population was inflated, it was impossible to publish the correct number for 2020. The discrepancy would be too big to explain. Dr. Yi gave several reasons in his latest article to explain why he calls China's 2020 census the worst census. And I think he illustrates how census data is manipulated in China. The first is that most of the people running the census are individuals from the Statistical Bureau and the Formal Family Planning Commission, the same people who have been manipulating the data for decades. They have to keep the data continuously inflated 
or else they will have to explain the discrepancies, and they cannot. The second reason is that the 2020 census required the verification of a person's household registration ID. The goal is to reduce duplication. But the problem is that the household registration system isn't reliable. The Chinese regime links more than 20 individual rights and social benefits to the household registration ID, such as the right to own real estate. So some Chinese obtain multiple household registrations for themselves, and this is quite common. The website for the CCP mouthpiece Xinhua reported a case in 2019 about how a couple bought real estate in Beijing and found that nine strangers' names had been registered under that address. When data in the household registration system is inflated, census data that is tied to it is also inflated. The third reason is that the income of census workers was linked to the number of citizens they count, which gave the workers incentive to beef up the numbers. The fourth reason has to do with China's centralized controlled economy. Local governments in China heavily rely on the central government's funding, which is allocated based on population. A larger population means more funding for education, medical, transportation, and social services. Therefore, a local government has every incentive to overstate its population. The social, political, and economic system the CCP has built and maintained over the decades has completely corrupted data integrity in China. It has also eroded any incentive to maintain data integrity. So, what does this mean for China's future? Five years ago, in June 2016, demographic scholar Yao Meixiong said that the proportion of children in China under the age of 14 dropped to 16.5%, which was much lower than the world average of 27%. This means that China's labor force will be alarmingly reduced in 10 to 20 years. Ren Zeping is the managing director at Guotai Junan Security Research. He was the deputy director of research at the State Council's Development Research Center. His team projected that if the total fertility rate stays at 1.0, which is very close to what Dr. Yi has estimated, by 2050 and 2100, the proportion of elderly people will be 31% and 53% respectively. In other words, by 2050, one in three people in China will be a senior citizen, and by 2000, more than half will be elderly. The only person who opposed the one-child policy when it first came out in the 1970s was an economist by the name of Liang Zhongtang. He warned that the policy would be a disastrous tragedy that would lead to a lifeless, suffocating society with no future. Too bad nobody heeded his warning. For more about China's population crisis, Click here to watch my earlier video. Don't forget to like and share my videos. Stay tuned, more will come.